please welcome Energy and Climate Policy Advisor, Terry Taminen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to the voice of God. I, I don't know who that is that always comes over the PA system, but give her a great big round of applause because... What a, what a great voice, and she's done a great job keeping us on time today. Uh, you're in for a big treat, and I want to make sure everyone has a chance to come in from the back and sit down, because, you know, all of us have been working very hard the last day and a half, and we know that the work we've done here will actually spawn even more work for all of us in the coming days and months ahead. And none of it will be easy, but all of it will have a great payoff. But we sometimes need to take a a breath and a, and, a, and a moment to say to ourselves, what's it all for? What's the inspiration? Why are we really doing this? And so we're going to take a moment right now to get that inspiration as we go into our final panel session this afternoon and the signing of the all-important declaration. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome singer and actress from the movie August Rush and the popular television show The Young and the Restless, Jamiah. Thank you, Jemiah. What a wonderful way to kick off the afternoon session and to remind us what this is really all about. Well, before we get to uh, our climate leaders and have our afternoon session, there are some other young people we'd like to introduce you to who will also remind us what this is really all about and what the next generation will do. When we were planning this summit, Governor Schwarzenegger said to me, you know, all of us old people are making these policies and coming up with these ideas and even these investments and companies that are going to uh, be part of the clean tech revolution, but it's the next generation 
that we'll actually have to inherit this and do something with what we decide here today. And so he said, you know, we really have to make sure we include the next generation of climate champions. Well, guess what? It turns out there is an organization of actual climate champions. Please welcome Martin Davidson, the chief executive of the British Council and Climate Champions. Thank you very much indeed. We know that 81% of young people around the world believe that the environment is one of the biggest issues for their generation. But we also know that they believe that they can make a difference. And today, you're going to hear from nine young Californians about their work on climate change. You'll also hear about how they are creating international connections with their peers to design and promote global solutions to tackle a global problem. Now, this summit has shown that tackling climate change requires multilateral action. But this action is not the preserve of governments alone. It must also be taken up from people right around the world. And that's what we do in the British Council. We create people-to-people -people connections which stretch across borders. These connections provide the bonds which tie people from all kinds of community from right around the world together. They make individual action seem both less remote but also more effective and that's key to making change happen. Through our work with partners right around the world and here I must mention the Californian Air Resources Board, our partners here in California, we support the work of talented and passionate people right across the world who are committed to tackling the causes of climate change and many of these young people are under the age of 18. And nine of the 15 young champions are here today to tell you about, in their own world, words, why climate change is urgent and important to them and what they are going to do to address it. So I'll leave it to them to speak for themselves. Hello. We represent 15 California climate champions, 200 international climate champions, and millions of youth from around the world. We believe that climate change is a problem of our generation, and it's our responsibility too change the habits of society, and repair our planet. From talking to friends and classmates, I've learned that in every school, there is an untapped energy and enthusiasm to lead a sustainable lifestyle. Youth around the world are capable of creating positive change and need a voice in climate change negotiations. We may have different perspectives on the solution, we may speak different languages, and we may come from different backgrounds, but we all share a common purpose. I have learned that I am not alone and that by working together, we can inspire change. But do people my age have the energy, motivation, and conviction to solve this problem? Yes, we do. We care about climate change because our economy, society, and quality of life will not continue for our children unless radical action is taken now. We care about climate change because everybody seems to know about it, but not everybody is doing something about it. How could you not care about the health and safety of those who are directly affected from hurricanes, wildfires, drought, flooding, lack of water, and poor air quality? I envision a future where everyone can live a sustainable life without stripping resources from others or coming generations. I wish for a world that operates on clean energy sources, without emissions. I want to see climate change taught in schools so that classrooms can become models for sustainability and students can take initiative in starting changes related to climate change. When I look to the future, I wonder, how do we keep the next generation from, becoming, from taking the burdens on from climate change? As climate champions, we reach out to others to tell them why climate change is so important to us, lead by example, and reduce our personal impact. Each of us climate champions has an individual project that we hope will lead to larger action. So what we do locally is felt globally. And whether it's getting recycling programs or solar panels installed in our schools, or communicating our message through television and newspapers, or building websites and starting carpool initiatives, we're all, tacking, we're all tackling climate change at the local level. 
We're all working on community greening projects, and for a minute, I'd like to share mine with you. I created an initiative called Students for Solar Schools, which relies on the focus efforts of students to campaign and lobby for solar panels. Right now, we're lobbying for approval of the panels on Westlake High School, right here in Southern California. And also, <laughs> all right. <laughs> and also laying the groundwork for a massive fundraising operation. But most importantly, through our website, we are working to inspire others across the country to take up a similar challenge and fight for sustainability themselves. You are taking action too. Last night, you signed an important agreement to reduce emissions by protecting forests. You know and we know that no one person can do everything, but every person must do something big or small. That means all of us and all of you. So together, let's figure out what are we doing about climate change. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin, and thanks to all of our climate champions. Great inspiration. Now, if you couldn't tell, because they look very mature, those were high school students, and obviously our university students are equally important in picking up this challenge and taking this to the next level. So uh, I'd like to now introduce the other half of this young student equation, Michael Cox, the chair of the California Student Sustainability Coalition. Please welcome Michael Cox. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. It's a deep honor to be provided with this opportunity to address such a distinguished and committed group of global leaders. In particular, I want to express my profound sense of gratitude and elation to Governor Schwarzenegger for both his leadership on climate and for prioritizing the involvement of students and young leaders in this summit, both here in person as well as with the webcast uh, co-produced with the University of California TV. Great strides are being made through this summit to effectively address the climate crisis, and I thank you all. I have a few brief, emphasis on brief, points for your consideration. Number one, we're living in extraordinary times, and I believe the, cr the climate crisis, like all the major crises created by our species and civilization, is rooted in a deeper crisis of values and the derivative manner in which we cultivate and allocate human capital. Number two, the vast majority of human capital is allocated in the sole pursuit of an economic bottom line. As a result of that process, we've externalized a tremendous amount of cost and risk, socially and ecologically, onto the greater system. And now, we are now witnessing a lot of that risk coming home to roost. Number three, over half of the population of our species is now under 30 years old, and that demographic trend is, is growing. We literally are the rising tide. Whether we lift all boats or flood civilization remains to be seen. Number four, if we are to unleash the latent potential of our species, especially the young, if we are to have a smooth transition from a, civiliz from a civilization based on an economic bottom line to a civilization based on a bottom line that integrates economic interests with that of social equity and ecological integrity, if we are to transcend the danger and realize the opportunity inherent in the climate crisis, we must re-envision reinvest and recreate our educational systems. We must comprehensively green the education sector. Institutional practices, curriculum, research, leadership and workforce development, and community partnerships. This really will be our engine of change. And last but not least, the early movers who do this, who green the education sector, they will secure a, com a competitive advantage in the emerging green economy and earn a leadership position in our emerging green civilization. And that is why myself and all the people that I work with are working very, very hard to green the schools in the Golden State. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.